Okay, welcome back everyone. And um, I hope you have had a good time. Have had a good time. So before we get into what you went out to do, let me quickly finish this section on the abstract. The key thing here is that the abstract is um, a synopsis, miniature of the project. Um, most journals will give you what limits, and this can range from as little as 100 to um, 500 words, depending on the, the um, this thing, depending on the, the type of paper you are submitting. It can be structured or unstructured. I'll come back to that. Um, Seems like be... the prof doesn't know that we are back. Don't you hear me? We hear you now. You don't hear me? We hear you. Okay. I hear you. We hear you. Okay. So I was saying before before we get into the this thing, um, the presentation of your work, um, that I want to finish the aspect on the abstract. Please, you can you can meet yourself if you are not speaking so that. Um, All right, so that most journals give a word limit for the abstract, and this can range from 100 to 500 words, depending on the type of paper you're submitting, and it can be structured or unstructured. Um, it should be clear and uh, accurately reflect um, what you have presented in the article. It should cover what you did and found and what the findings mean. Uh, many readers will not have the full paper you have submitted. They will only have um, the abstract. And so um, you need to be uh, clear um, so that um, from what you have presented in the abstract, they can get at least uh, sufficient information to have a clue of what you have done. Um, so when you write the abstract, it should only include the things you have stated in the main paper. And so not extra things or things that you have not presented in the, the main paper. And here, the principles of precision, clarity, and brevity also stand. And um, this you should actually, so the structure is where the journal has presented some subheadings, you should present your um, um, abstract on. So this is common introduction methods, results, and a conclusion. And unstructured is when the journal does not give any description with regards to this type of headings, and you can write it um, free, free style, free style. Um, this is an example of unstructured um, abstract here. Um, these authors have uh, written for this work. And this is an example of um, a structured abstract. In the paper, um, you have uh, read your paper now. You can see the abstract of that paper. And uh, most of those, I think, will be um, um, structured, structured abstract. Most of those you have. Group nine. All right, so that is uh, the key thing about abstracts. And what I will do now is we are taking from group seven to group 12. Group seven to group 12. So what I want you to do is group seven, share your screen and let's see what you have done to this text here. What? What have you done? What is your own output now from that text? Is group seven ready? And every group please get ready. Is group seven ready to mm -hmm. show their screen? I'll see you in the Zoom. Huh? Huh? Group, who is present for group seven? Please talk to me. Is group eight ready? 
Yes. Right. Please go ahead and share. Who is, who is uh, answering this? Uh, Nick, are you showing for group seven? No, I'm answering for group oh, seven. No, no. Nick, are you showing for group seven? I'm, I'm sharing for group no, eight. No, 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 no. All right, okay. Uh, which age, please go ahead. And group nine, get ready. Group 10, get ready. Group 11, get ready. And group 12, get ready. Hello, Prof. Yeah, I can hear you. Go ahead. I don't know if you can see my screen. I can see your screen. Okay, in group eight, we agreed that the result was presented in the chronological order. Then for the second part of the question, this was what we were able to come. We, we decided to make a table out of the statements. As mm -hmm. you can see, we called it table one, where we said them, you can see the mean BMI, pre-operative and post-operative um, results for the patient, then the mean difference. And so the overweight had 27, mildly obese 32.1, 23.1, yeah. just but, like that. But, but that is the yeah. that is the data now. So in, in terms of text, in terms of text. Yes, in text. Okay, we just presented it this way. We concluded that table one indicates a marked reduction in BMI. BMI mean the mildly obese group compared to the overweight patients. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Let's see. Thank yeah. You. Let's see what group other groups have. Group number nine. Group number seven. Emma, you can do yours. You can do yours quickly. Group yes. number nine, please get ready. Yeah. Group yes, number ten. Good afternoon for all. Uh, sorry for delay because I was preparing the the slide of PowerPoint for the data. Uh, what, uh, let me share. The, um, the data and the text or the description of the data was very difficult because they're, they're, the story is not uh, organized well. So we, we were struggled to understand this, this table that is presented in, in, in the data. But we, we, um, we, in our opinion, the comparison found in the text is not, is not correct. Um, he he compared uh, the pre-operative group, mild and overweight together, and found the difference or change in the weight. But this is not correct because the correct is compare mild weight pre with the mild weight uh both oh. the operative mm -hmm. so and what is what is your correction in terms of the text now uh text it, uh, we didn't uh, have time to write it to write it text. okay this, this issue so you were struggling with this uh, at the same time the the comparison of overweight brie should be done with the overweight bust so we not said that the both subsets uh, uh, become more obese or have increased in the body mass index uh, after the, the surgery. So this, this surgery lead to increase the body weight for, for both subsets. Mm -hmm. Did you All right. my, my point? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's have group number, group number um, nine, please. You can stop sharing. <coughs> Group number uh, nine, who is presenting uh, for that? Professor, do you want our comment about the results section of the paper? Yeah, I wanted you to rewrite that results. If you okay. if you got my instruction properly. Yeah, yeah. But okay, but that is sorry. fine, we can, we can work on that now. now. Okay, Group number nine, who is presenting? Group number 10. Number nine. Group number nine, you are presenting our results. Is it okay? Go ahead. Okay. 
So uh, based on the structure of the paper, we saw that the paper was uh, arranged in chronological order uh, with the following reasons. As uh, we have this example, we see the, the first thing was the study selection of which when you go to how many papers were there and uh, finally how many papers were included. Uh, there was a presentation of uh, results on the on the allergy food allergies and also they followed the frequency of the questions which were asked previously in the in the main questions. So for us, we say this have been a chronological order um, and uh, it followed the, that particular system. To summarize, uh, these were the important things that were calculated, but then to the result, there was a lot of, a lot of discussion on how to interpret the result which were just presented. And for us, we said uh, um, in the stud, which compared the BMI of people who were overweight and those who are uh, with mildly obese, pre and post operation, uh, the finding were that obese people showed significant loss of weight as compared to those who were overweight uh, with a standard deviation of, uh, with a standard deviation of, or with a decrease of weight of uh, 6 point, negative 6.8 when compared to those who had mild overweight, who they just decreased with a 3.4. The question is that uh, these are two different groups. However, so I, we don't know exactly if the comparison were making sense because of two different groups which were compared. But quantitatively, the, 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 those who had mild obese showed a high in decrease of the weight. All right, thank you. Group number 10. Sorry, Prof, I was talking while muted. So with our group, we, um, first of all, for question one, we agree that the results were presented in a chronological order because it goes along with how the materials and the methods are flowing. But we spend a lot of time trying to really um, dissect the, the results, the mean, how was the mean calculated? So we lost a lot of time. But however, in the end, we said, OK, what is the best way to um, summarize this data so that a, 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 a reader can understand, you know, without being caught up in all how the mean ranges and this is how what we came up with. And we ran out of time, Prof, to summarize the text. Oh, wow. But we okay. thought this was easy to digest for any reader. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, let's go to group number 11. Oops, let me stop sharing. Group number 11. Yes, let me, let me try to share. Um, is this clear? Yeah, we see. Okay, so we said it is chronological order because it starts with descriptive results. Then it goes to the main results. The data is well presented in a tabular format. It is clear, precise, and brief. Question two. The analysis shows a drop in BMI in both overweight and mildly obese respondents, respondents post-operatively. The mean pre and post-operative BMI for students, for patients, sorry, who are overweight compared to those who are mildly overweight was 27.0 and 23.1 respectively. Then we said that the average BMI for the pre-operatively overweight group fell into the normal weight range while the average BMI for the obese group fell into the overweight range. The preoperatively heavier grouping of patients lost approximately twice as much weight, demonstrating a significant divergence in trajectory between the BMI groups. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, thank you. Okay. I can see that um, you are making efforts in these things, and that is that is a good sign. Finally, group number twelve. Yes, professor. Uh, am I audible? 
We hear you. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, professor, for um, am I sharing well? Okay, professor, for us, um, in our group, we spent a little bit of uh, uh, time wasting. A little bit, we, we seek uh, we apologize for that. All right. Uh, but looking at the yeah, first question, we all agreed that uh, the data was presented in a uh, chronological order uh, based on uh, uh, um, uh, based on how the the data was flowing. So we we all agreed that it was uh, presented in a chronological order. But based on uh, the other um, results and the respective mean, pre and post operative BMI for the subset of weight uh, of overweight versus the subset of multi uh, obese patients, we, uh, we hesitated a little bit. So we could not come up with a, a very good language that uh, may uh, represent something audible. But uh, on all, we agreed that uh, the obese patients uh, showed a significant uh, weight loss, uh, more significant weight loss compared to the uh, overweight. We were still in the moment of politi politicking by the time we are caught up with uh, the bill. We apologize for that. We'll catch up. We'll, we'll improve next time. All right. So what do you mean? What do you mean by politicking? What kind of politics were you playing there? We, we delayed. We oh, you just, delayed. Uh, you you yeah. delayed. You were doing uh, the, the the playing with some toys. Please, my professor. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. That's good. That's good that people can find something to engage themselves and take their mind away from. You see how this text is danced. This this is this is the real paper someone has presented. All right. And sometimes you can actually make these mistakes. Um, that um, the communication is broken. Communication is broken. So thank you very much that you were able to look into this and uh, be able to make sense of it, at least for yourself. All right? So I just want to show you what is happening here. So this is the original text here, as before. And this is what I've reduced it to. You can see it, it has the same it has the same meaning as most of you have um, indicated. All right. But now what is happening here is look at the amount of text and much of what is here is data. Much of what is here is data. And then the interpretive side, they make it even more difficult by writing too much. So the, the message they want to pass here is that the mildly obese patients lost almost twice as much weight as the overweight patients. That is the message they have here. That is the message they have here. That is the interpretation of the data they have there. But they ended up confusing themselves, thinking that they, conf they can confuse us. They don't know we are smarter. All right, at least we have gone to this course. So we can pick, pick them out. But the problem is that we do not have so much time to do this. And so what you will do is you're reading this text. Once you come here, you just skip it because looking at it, it doesn't make sense to you. You don't have the time. There is no luxury of time to look at this. What you do is that you make your paper irrelevant. Imagine how many people will go through this transition of bringing this to this. How many people? Nobody will do that. Nobody will do that. All right. So, but we have done this as exercise in this course. What is the bottom line? The bottom line is the results is interpreting the data. And when you do that, do it precisely, clearly, bravely. 
have the reader in mind. Would they understand what I'm doing? Does it make sense? Does it confuse them? Am I communicating? If you answer no to those questions, then you need to do it again. Practice it. Perhaps the, the, the second try will be that half of this is gone. Then you try it again. Half of that is gone. Then you try it again. It is only through practice. You can get it right. Let's listen to group number nine for their nuggets before I send you out to your, your um, groups. Group number nine, are you ready? Yes. Please go ahead. Can you see my screen? I can see no. your screen. Uh, no. no, not yet, not yet. Oh, we not can't sure. see. No, we cannot see the screen. No. It's not coming up yet. Okay. Now you can see. Nice come. Yeah. So our nugget was about <clears throat> about scientific public, scientific publishing in biomedicine. Jeremiah Fuser and um, my slide is not okay. So. As I said, scientific publishing in biomedicine, uh, introduction publishing is making something generally known and also to de disseminate to the, to the public what you have gotten in your research results. And uh, in research, it is cons research is considered complete if it is published, read by other people and also understood. And sometimes it is better if it is believed by others and maybe the need of replicating it. And failure to, to, to reach others is always of little value for your research. Publishing in peer reviewed high quality journal is a gold standard method also for disseminating the scientific work as you have been speaking all over the days. So choosing the, the, the right journal is one of the most important and difficult aspect of publishing research. And uh, the bad thing is submitting to an, an inappropriate journal is one of the most common reason for first rejection of the manuscript as I've heard from our, our previous colleagues, resulting in time wasted by the author, but also by editors, because they will be looking to work that cannot be of value to the uh, journal. Um, publishing also makes research finding publicly available and allow rest of the academic audience to use that information and evaluate its quality. Therefore, if you won't publish, then you are doing something wrong in that. So what are the importance of publishing? Publishing is, in an international journal is, is now a prerequisite for academicians, especially for promotion and other thing. But also publishing brings attention to the researchers and the institutions. Therefore, when you publish, uh, the institution is well known, also the publishers also not well known to the, to the other people. In biomedicine, it's also one thing that we publish can be combined in a systematic review to generate something that will be used for as evidence of for policy making. So what are the factors affecting journal targeting? So number one is journal characteristics. So scientific, scientific quality and the prestige, which includes index by established bibliography database like PubMed. If the journal is uh, having index and have been indexed in PubMed, Pub, PubMed Central, and all other that have been mentioned here, then that's the major characteristic that you have to publish to. As also having peer review process citation based in metric, the impact factor is also a very important component now. As we see those journals with a high impact factor, most of us are always in need of publishing there. But also a reputation of publisher. So there are a lot of publishers who are now uh, very have high reputation, as we will see later on. Reputation of editorial boards, who are editors in the in, in, who are the editors? Because how they are respected, also your paper will be respected, and it's one of the factors that will affect the targeted journal. Adapting publication ethics, there are a lot of uh, journals that follow this, but there are some journals that cannot follow it. 
journal longevity that how long have been there in market, like maybe nature, um, other journals, expert opinions and who they are having it. The other factor is journal performance. It can affect the journal targeting. Journal performance include publication periodicity, timeline, is it monthly, quarterly, quality and mode of peer review process, how is it? Is it good peer review? There's a contribution on what author also can get. The author friendly option for journal, the way how they interact with the author and the journal interact, uh, interact it also makes sense on um, factor affecting it. Publication charge, the high the cost also reduce the number of people who publish. Ethics in publishing process, which include confidentiality, considering ethic guideline, but also publishing model. A lot of people love also open access, and especially in African context, but also some people want the subscription journal. So it depends on also people choose based on that. The print versus online journal also uh, is one of the factor affecting it because most people like printing and online together because they add audience, number of people who will read the paper. So there was component of uh, prones for open journal access, but I will continue with factor affecting journal. I will come back here. The other factor affecting journal targeting is acceptance possibility, the rate of acceptance. Because as we said earlier, there are journals that accept maybe 5% of the paper which are submitted. Therefore, people who are targeting journal will also think about that. And it depends to what are you sending. Are you a PhD student? Do you want to finish your work to do something? Author country and the affiliation also is affected because there are a lot of uh, research have been showing that there are a lot of major journals also publish authors from a certain places or certain geographical locations, also affiliation. A well-known co-authors because the more authors known have authority on certain topic, the more easy they're published in major journal and also other things. Past communication experience with editor also um, affect the targeted journal. The journal speciality and importance of audience also affect that. The other thing is characteristic of manuscript. The relevance of manuscript, is it relevant to that particular journal? If it's not relevant, you cannot go and publish there. Topic relevance, the type of relevance, also the quality of manuscript. If they, you are, you are, your data are very novel, they are new, you want to publish them maybe in New England Journal, in Nature. The priority, if you see that this is has high priority based on the time, like now we are in COVID, a lot of paper were method, potential impact factor that what will happen after the result have been published. Will it affect the policy making? All But other factors push for rapid publication may also affect the journal targeting. Push or desire of publication in precise journal also may affect that. Institution policy, there's also some institution that choose maybe we only publish in this kind of journals. Therefore, that also may affect the journal targeting. Also, regulation of research funding agents. There are some research fundings that may choose, oh, the result from this have to be published in this kind of journal. To reflect on what have been um, have been invested, um, they are sometimes we want to know some information regarding uh, which journal to select. So there are useful journal links that you can use. These are just some. We will share the slide for you to find out. But also there are journal database that can show you number of journals that are there. But apart from that, they are. not good, they are called the predatory journals. Therefore, they also list it for them that he, as you are publishing, you can be aware, okay, this is not nice journal for me to send my article. Uh, there are a lot of other useful information about the acceptance rate, like uh, Elsevier, the medicines, all you can see, okay, the rate of acceptance maybe is 5%. My, can I be in 5%? So, so what are the steps toward choosing the right journal? The first thing is providing a reasonable list of potential journals. How suggestion by colleagues, you may be hearing, maybe if we have the professor who is good in epidemiology, he may suggest some journal which he sees that the topic fits well. Seek the reference in rest of manuscript. Uh, there are a lot of manuscripts whereby also you can learn, okay, based on what I've read in my literature review, this might be potential journal that I can present my or I can publish my work. Search in index database as I showed you earlier. But apart also af uh, after that, after you have done that, you have to prioritize potential journal considering. Here you have to consider journal characteristics, 
as we mentioned, the characteristics for the journal, the intrinsic value of the work, and author priority also and limitation also have to be judged. After you have considered all this, you have to select at least three to five journal that you want to publish. Then after you have selected them, consider exactly what do you have that you want to publish and uh, what journal can accommodate. Then go to selecting the final target journal. In conclusion, choosing the right journal for manuscript is a crucial decision affecting not only the pre-publication process, but also the post-publication success of the paper. This is paper visibility and also effectiveness of research findings and getting more citation because the better journal you publish, the better citation you get, the better attention you get to others. Also, the journal characteristic intrinsic value of manuscript and author priority and limitation are the most important factor that need to be considered for journal targeting. There's these factors here which are very important for um, the pros and cons for open access journal that you can read by yourself because we are, we are mostly going to publish here, but knowing the disadvantage like author processing charges, high rate of predatory journals, relative low impact factors, potential low quality of peer review, low established reputation, all these you may be want, we may be in need of publishing to the open access, but these are the prongs that you may get at the end. Thank you very much. The end of our, our presentation. All right. Thank you, group number nine, for that. Um, I think uh, several important things have been mentioned here. So please take notes take notes all right so um this is where we end for today and i will send you to your breakout sessions now uh, you have about half an hour but you plan to see how you're going to manage that um and then you can continue outside the outside the class um um I, some groups complain that a lot of people are not contributing to the work of the group, but you know that that is going to affect you. So please, um, the the best thing you do is to um, is to actively participate in the group work. Okay, because we are taking note of that. Actively participate in the group work. Don't 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 leave it for others to do. Then you earn the credit. It's not um, it's not right. So please. All right, um, I'll, I'll send you out now. Uh, if you have not put your group um, your group number, please. Uh, Patience, you have something to say? Yes, sir. I want to ask, what are we going to do in the meeting now, in the group? Your, your project, your project is two days away. Okay. okay. It's two days Thank away. I, I, hope, I hope all the groups have gone far in that. You had a whole weekend, eh? Yes, we've started uh, in my group. Great. Great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Thank Nelson. You, prof. Uh, prof, um, I had question before our um, uh, our lunch break. Oh, you had question? Yeah. Yes, I had question, so I was waiting to 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 present it. Mm -hmm. uh, my question is related to the discussion. Uh, discussion yeah. section. Mm -hmm. I would like to know if we have to discuss every, every all the results that we present in in the paper no okay so you the the results you discuss are those that are related to the question you asked before to your objectives okay you understand to your objectives because in the paper you have several results you have descriptive results mm -hmm. you have secondary result, but those that really relate to your main objectives are the ones you discuss. Okay. And if your paper ends up having hypotheses, then you focus on the hypothesis you have um, stated. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. So, I have uh, a similar or? Prof, thank you, Prof. Uh, I want to ask uh, one question. Uh, about uh, the results uh, to ensure the readers, uh, you need to, to confirm your results with uh, other other authors in literature. Mm -hmm. If in your 
if 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 in your results uh, your results you you don't you don't found uh, an uh, other hotels to mm -hmm. confirm your your results what mm -hmm. are you going to do you say you say you don't find what? You understand? You say you don't find, you didn't find any previous paper on the topic. Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah. So that, that is what you have to say. Okay. Okay. Simple. Yeah, yeah. It's simple. Okay. It's, it, there's, okay. no, there's no difficulty here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. I have kudos. Kudos, Lawa. Kudos, Alawa. Sorry. Hello. Yeah. Thank you, Prof. I, my question is about discussion. I recently submitted a paper and uh, while I was trying to explain my results, I gave some explanation for the finding I got. But the reverse comment was that my explanation was not scientific and it went ahead to give me a possible explanation for the finding. I was thinking my, my explanation is valid enough, but I had to just go with the option they give me. So I'm asking, uh, can a reviewer actually decide what how you interpret your results? Should that be the case? Well, uh, it should be. It should be based on the science. So if you're if you're explaining your result, the meaning of your result, you need to you need to base it on uh, what is known, um, process that is known, and you need to support that with uh, relevant literature. It's not the speculation you make there is not on your own assumption. It's actually on what is oppression and what is known, and you support such argument with the literature, relevant literature. So if you're able to support that argument with relevant literature, then if the reviewer gives um, a counter opinion, then you need to cite that. Of course, the reviewer will have to cite um relevant literature of course to 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 support his or her view and uh, if that is contrary to what you have given then it means that there is a divided opinion on that topic all right and so what you do is now to integrate your side and the reviewer side to acknowledge the um divided opinion on the topic um, but first of all your your um your explanation should be um, evidence-based. If it's not, and then the reviewer has perhaps knowledge, better knowledge than you in the topic, and she, uh, she will suggest uh, something you have to do. And um, then you have to follow that, of course. Thank you, sir. All right, Ogochuku. Thank you, Pro. Pro, please, my question. Sorry, can you hear me? I hear you. I hear you. Okay. Please, how do we know when one's paper is a short or short communication? Because I I sent a, a work out as original article, and the editor said we I should re rewrite as short communication. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it happens often. Um, um, there are, there are factors that may 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 uh cost that um, and the editors, you know, the journals struggle with space and publishing um, um, requires um, a lot of space. So if the editor evaluates, first of all, the one of the key things that we make them to request for short communication when you submitted original paper is um, what is known on, the, on that topic. If it's a new, area. Um, short communication usually prompts the, the scientific community in that area of something new that has been um, developed. All right. In that case, um, the editor feels that you, there is no need to develop too much space to make lots of speculation. Let's put it as short communication. Um, that is one. Then the second thing is that it may also be that lots had been done on that topic, but the perspective you have provided offers some extension. And then the uh, editor feels that um, because lots have been done, then there is no need to um, spend so much space on some irrelevant aspects. So reduce it as short 
communication. Overall, it is the editor's discretion uh, based on the priority of the journal to make that decision. So there may be other um, factors that influence that decision, um, and that is the editor's uh, decision. So you have to either accept, accept what the editor has decided, or you um, find, take it to another journal. Take it to another okay, journal. Prof, I can decide to send a journal a, 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 a short communication. Yeah, so you, it, I've been issue, you can, you can submit your paper as a short communication. Okay, um, if you make assessment of your paper, you can submit as short communication. But the, the editor also has the right to make that request. Okay, thank you. Bro. All right, um, I have Chima Olu, Olu Kole. There are so many hands up there, but we'll yeah. take a few. But Chima, Good go evening, ahead. Prof. Thank you so much. Uh, mine is very simple. I want to find out if there's a standard number of pages for discussion, because I remember a certain time I submitted the journal, I think three, three pages, and then the reviewers still asked me to add to it. And I felt that ah, they're not being overflogged, but I just want to know, is there a standard number of pages for discussion? No, no, there is no standard number of pages for anything at all. Um, the journals usually give a number of words, a maximum words, um, so you have to um, look at the uh, amount of words you have used. You shouldn't, you shouldn't use too much words in the introduction and then use less words in the discussion when you need to expand discussion. But uh, I think uh, if you don't have exhaustive discussion, then the reviewers will, of course, figure that out and uh, request that you expand the discussion. Um, sometimes their requests um makes you to um um ex exceed what the the limit the journal has requested and so of course then you can write to the journal to say that um you have this number of words and if you add what this reviewer is asking um then we'll get to this point and usually they, they say it's fine just go ahead and do it but first of all when you submit make sure that you have exhausted the discussion as far as you have uh, space, um, but don't give excuse that you have taken uh, the space you will use for your discussion to an introduction. If you have to expand your uh, discussion and your introduction is long, then cut the introduction and use that yeah. space to um, discuss your your results. Uh -huh. Thank you, Prof. All right, then I have Port here, Rhoda yes, and Fios. Then we we'll, we'll, questions we'll move on. Well, thank you so much for the session. Please, uh, it's a follow-up question on what somebody asked about a reviewer giving him a comment for him to include some references about a uh, point he made in his discussion. Mm -hmm. So I want to find out in instances where you don't have a reference for a point at all, can you use that um, a probable explanation may be due to this and that and that? So if you use the word probable, are you permitted to go without citing? That is if you can't get a reference. Well, why can't you get a reference? Is it that you are the uh, about Einstein on that topic now? No, yeah. it's not a topic, but so, you are trying so to So you need interpret. to come to Sweden for Nobel, Nobel Prize. <laughs> hmm? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, but yeah, it's uh... <laughs> so. Is it is it that you have not found the reference, or you are the first? If you are the first, the Nobel Prize is given in Sweden here, so we can invite you to come and take one. <laughs> yes, so, Prof, so you see that. Come and collect it. Yeah. Please, uh, I'm asking you because I see that. Come and collect it. Collect the Hello, award. Prof. No, let's uh, let's hear what here. Potia, go ahead. Prof, please. I'm saying that because uh, I see that in our context here, where some of the students mm -hmm. they give a reason that it's a probable reason, so they are making inference from the data. Mm -hmm without having to necessarily cite. So if that is not allowed, then I can also take some cues from it, please. Thank you. No, no, you have to, that is why, you know, the, what's it called? The, the 
um, tips and tricks we're having um, 30th of December. Um, it would be good that you come there. Sometimes it's actually the inability of the researcher to, to find the relevant literature. Okay, it's inability of the researcher to find it. So you have to, before you start your topic, you need to mm -hmm. um, search exhaustively to see what is happening in that field. And uh, it's, um, I think it's, it's, a, it's, it's a blind investigation if you don't know what is happening in the field and you start a study because you need to know. So if there is um, a paucity of data on the topic, it should be revealed when you are searching your literature, okay? And so you yes. can use that as a basis to persuade your study. And so if you don't have any, any relevant literature, the reviewers are experts in the field, they will always find that because they know, they know what is happening. So if you have not cited, they will figure that out and then they will call your attention to that. Okay, sir. Thank you yep. very much. All right. Then I have Rhoda. Okay. Good afternoon, Prof. Thank you for the wonderful talk that you have given us today. I just want to find out some... I was a bit confused at the level of the conclusion. Uh, you said we should not state our results. So I don't know exactly what we are concluding because let's say you work on a prevalence study and then you got some results and then at the conclusion you say, finally, this was the prevalence to what you were investigating. I don't mm -hmm. know if that is a conclusion. Or that, that, is, that, that, that can be accommodated, uh, Rhoda. Okay, okay. That can be accommodated. Okay. Mm, but um, it's it's not a common thing that when you're concluding, then you repeat the results. But the the example you have cited can be accommodated. Okay. I thought the hand should be reducing. It's actually increasing. And um, I, I don't know what, okay. So those who have spoken, you need to bring your hand up because I will not call you the second time. There are those who have spoken. Okay, professor. They no, no. Are the waiting, waiting room. room, okay. Um, yeah, this um, was just because of that. We have work, our colleague is struggling to get him. Oh, I don't know what is happening. Dr. Ajibola, can you please help me to see those who are in the waiting room? All right, I have Pius, please. Thank you, Professor. Okay. Uh, uh, good afternoon, Prof. Good afternoon. Okay. Please, um, there is this phenomenon where scientists and researchers in developing countries prefer journals in first world countries. So it seems that their prestige is associated with publishing in high impact factor journals or foreign journals, either in Europe or America. If we cannot get there, go to India. So no, I, I didn't I didn't get that. I didn't get can you repeat yourself? Okay, I said that scientists and researchers in developing countries. Yeah, prefer if they can, they prefer to publish in journals in first world countries, Europe, mm -hmm. America. Yeah, and where they cannot get there, we'll go to India. Mm -hmm. So, this um, there's this institution in Nigeria, uh, it's Mandapodio University mm -hmm. in Sokoto State, Nigeria. In the recent promotion that they did, they brought a new rule. That 30 to 40 percent of someone or a researchers or a lecturers articles should be published in regional journals. What mm -hmm. they mean by regional journals is journals domiciled in northwestern Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So when they brought out that rule, a lot of people fell by the wayside and could not get mm -hmm. their promotion. Mm -hmm. So, however, because of the desire for, I know that it affects the impact factor of local journals where local researchers don't publish there so people cannot cite these articles so uh, what is your take on this especially this issue of impact factor no somebody i, I read somewhere that we, we will uh, new... we, prior, let me stop you let me stop you um we have um we have um um a session on that we have a session on that i think tomorrow Okay. okay, we'll have a session on that. I think tomorrow. Um, so let's 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 come to that. Let's come to that tomorrow. Mm, let's come to that tomorrow. Uh, bring your question there. All right. Where, where is the noise coming from, Rachel? 
All right, I have with Chechi, with Chechi game, then uh, I will call Ed now and we move. All right, thank you, Prof. My question is with regards to the last nuggets that I listened to. And I want to ask, is it possible that there is a search engine that can help you get a journal that will accept um, the scope of the manuscript? That's because I sent a paper no, to- No, no, if there is a search engine, Yes, or something that can help you get the most suitable journal. That's because I sent a paper to cardiology on Springer that was like two months ago. And after a month, um, after a rigorous peer review, they told me that my manuscript was not suitable for their journal. And then they said I should wait for Springer Dex to make suggestions of journals where I can send my articles. They sent me like three of them to make my choice. And so that's why I'm asking, is it possible there is a search engine that can help us get the most suitable journal? Maybe the, we can the only search engine in um, which is uh, search on Google in your area, but um, because, because you are, you are um, in that area, the first search engine is yourself. Because when you're in that area and then you have done your PhD, um, there is an expectation that you should have read um, papers in your field. And when you're reading papers in your field, you take note of where they have been published. Okay. You understand? So, so you should have a list. In fact, in your field, you should have a list of the journals the toppest journals, the least top journals in your field, you should have them as a catalog. Okay. But if you don't have that, then go to Google and search journals in cardiology. You will find those journals. Okay. If that is difficult, then your colleagues around here, your senior colleagues, go to them. Um, I'm, I'm looking for journals. You, you can, you can, you can, you should have a, a network of people in your field, for instance, in your country. You can click create a Google uh, doc and say, please put a note of the journals you know in our area, then you collect them. But that is for every professional that you should have a list of the journals in your area of, um, of uh, interest. That, that, is, that is a very, a very basic requirement. Thank you, Prof. All right, Edna, finally. Edna Azikwe. Okay, Edna is not there. Um, please, what do you want to do now? Because you have three, uh, seven minutes to, to end this. So do you have platforms you meet or do you want me to send it to your breakout rooms? Sorry, sir. We have our groups. You have group what? Group what's Zoom meet. What's up? What's up, group? Yes. What's up? So yeah, you don't need to be. In, you don't need me. You don't need me to send you to your breakout sessions, sir. Huh? Uh, breakout sessions. Let's break okay. out. Okay. Then continue on our WhatsApp group. You continue your WhatsApp group, sir. No, we can. We can try. We can break out. Break out and okay, I will break send you to your breakout rooms. The groups. The groups that want to meet should go and meet. Otherwise, you can go, and and use other as other platforms you have. <laughs> Edna is available, sir. 